Hallo Deutschlerner! I'm headed back to Germany for the first time since 2018, so I thought it would be a good idea to share some travel tips for those of you who are planning to stop by Germany this summer or in the near future. The first question that is commonly asked by those traveling to Germany is, how much German should I know before I go? My answer has always been, as much as you can. If you have three months before your trip, learn three months worth of German. You might not be able to converse about international politics, but at least you can order food and ask for directions in German. My friend and verified travel expert Mark Walters from the YouTube channel Walters World had this to say about the topic. And I'm sure I don't need to tell this to people who are watching a YouTube channel that's about learning German. And that is, um, don't forget to learn a few words because that Danke, you know, thank you, and Bitte, please, will go a long way because Germans do appreciate when you do try. Now, they'll switch to English, so it's going to be hard for you to actually practice your German when you go there because uh, they'll just go, ah, I can speak English, it's okay. But just knowing a few things, even the Danke, Ja, Nein, just the basics will go a long way to make your trip to Germany even more enjoyable. So have fun, and I'll send it back to my buddy. If you're walking on a sidewalk in Germany, be cognizant of the side of the sidewalk that you're on. There is usually one side for bikers and another side for walkers. German bikers can be strangely aggressive. I have almost a PTSD kind of reaction to anybody with a bell on their bicycle because of all of the times that I have made this mistake. My daughter's bike has a bell on it and I flinch every time she rings that stupid bell. When you hear the bell, it's probably because you're on the wrong side of the sidewalk. If you don't heed the warning of the bell, you might get a Hallo Fahrradweg! Or if you still don't get the hint or you didn't move fast enough, I've had bikers brush past me with little to no distance between us as they whiz by. Don't be surprised if some Oma yells at you when you try to cross the street either outside of a crosswalk or when the Ampelmännchen is still red. I've had someone physically reach out and restrain me when I tried to cross on a red Ampelmännchen. They didn't like put me in a chokehold or anything, it was more of like a back of the hand on my chest kind of thing, but it did take me off guard. I've had a lot of questions from my in-person students about the changes for visa regulations for Americans traveling into Germany this summer. This change goes into effect in 2024, so for this summer you won't need a visa in order to travel as an American into Germany. If you're watching this video in 2024, however, first of all, welcome future person, but also you will need to apply for an ETIAS authorization. Technically it's not a visa, but this is what the people on the internet keep calling it anyway. You can do this electronically, and I have a link in the description that explains all of the details about it. Long story short, for now a passport is good enough to get you into Germany and to stay for up to 90 days. Starting in 2024, you will have to apply for permission to go to Germany, and then you can stay for up to 90 days total over a 180 day period. Next up is all about tipping in Germany. Do you tip? If so, when? Whom do you tip? How much do you tip? All of the questions. Well. Try not to overthink it. There are a few categories into which I would classify the people that do get tips in Germany. The first category are the wait staff, your waiters and your waitresses. In the USA, it's common to leave a relatively large tip of 15 to 20 percent or even more. This is definitely not the case in Germany. My general rule of thumb is to simply round up to the closest euro and maybe add an extra euro if I feel like they did an excellent job. Let's say the bill is 18 euros and 24 cents. I would hand the waiter a 20 euro bill and say stimmt so, which is basically like keep the change. This gives them a tip of 1 euro and 76 cents, which in the United States is terrible, but in Germany this is pretty standard. The main difference is that in the US it's legal to pay the wait staff less than minimum wage and have their tips make up the difference in pay. In Germany this is not the case. The wait staff are paid a decent wage and any tips that they get are a bonus on top of that. A few side notes about this. If you're paying with a card, it is still preferred that you pay the tip in cash. Don't just leave cash on the table and walk off, as it's common in the USA. Hand the money to the waiter or waitress. If your bill is not close to a denomination of any paper money, but you still want to leave a small tip, you can tell the waiter or waitress to make change for a different amount. So let's say your bill is 16 euros and 35 cents. You can tell them 18 euro and hand them a 20 euro bill. The waiter or waitress then comes back with 2 euros and keeps the other euro and 65 cents as their tip. The second group of people to tip are your tour guides. If you're participating in a group of one of those free tour guides, you definitely need to tip, as this is how the tour guide makes any money whatsoever. I generally tip anywhere from 2 euros to 5 euros, depending on the quality and the length of the tour. 
If you paid for the tour already, technically there's no need to tip the guide, but I still do it. Generally, I tip anywhere from 1 to 3 euros for those types of tours. The bottom line is this, don't overthink tipping. If you think service was good, give a tip. If you don't want to give a tip, don't. Unless the employee's entire paycheck depends on the patron's tipping, tipping isn't necessary. A few euros here or there, however, will go a long way. While traveling in the USA, it is incredibly common to rent a car and drive pretty much everywhere you go. That's because public transportation, by and large, in the United States is atrocious. In Germany, it is the opposite. With very few exceptions, you should be able to get anywhere you want to go within Germany with a train or bus. If you're staying in Munich for a couple of days, for example, get a day pass that's valid on all of the trains in Munich. Then you can go wherever you want without worrying about whether or not your ticket is valid in that area. If you're in a large group, check out the deals for groups because those can be great. Just keep in mind that your group has to be together wherever the ticket is. If your group splits up, you have to have a ticket to ride the train legally. Also don't forget, no matter what kind of ticket you have, you have to validate the ticket before you get on the train. There are little stamp stations all around to get this done, but it's still a common mistake by travelers. My buddy Mark has a few tips about train travel as well. A few words of wisdom before you go. Number one, expect craziness in the train stations because the super cheap tickets that you can go all over Germany on the regional trains is back this summer and Germans will take advantage of that. And you as a tourist can take advantage of it too. So like $52, 49 euros will get you pretty much unlimited train travel. Not on all the trains, but a lot of the trains. So take advantage of that. But do know that those trains to popular destinations on the weekends will be full, 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 full. So another tip I have for you is if you don't want to deal with that, don't forget to book a seat reservation and take one of the fast trains, the ICE trains. They will get you a lot faster than regional trains, a lot more comfortable, and you can get a seat reservation. And those seat reservations, they're only a few euros, so a few dollars for the peace of mind. Um, and I do have a tip for you is don't be surprised if somebody's sitting in your seat, even if it says reserved above that, have it ready to be like, hey, look, I have my ticket. That's my seat reservation up and out because they'll get up and get out. If you have any problems, don't be afraid to go talk to the conductor because you don't need to sit on the floor by the door. You paid for that seat and it's cheap. So get those, okay? Next up, we have safety and family friendliness. Germany is incredibly safe in comparison to the United States. Chances of you falling victim to some violent encounter in Germany is basically zero. There are a few things that you should be aware of, however. Pickpockets are a thing, especially in crowded areas. A good rule of thumb is, when you go into a crowded area, make sure that your wallet is in your front pocket and put your hand over that pocket. If you're a purse carrier, you should keep your purse in the front of you and keep your hand on it while in crowded areas. Besides pickpockets, you should also be cautious of anyone asking you for money. This is true of any country. If someone comes up to you and asks for spare change, you can give them money, but keep in mind there are those who are making a living off of begging for change on the street in Germany. Some of them are just scamming you and taking your money. Some of them could legitimately use the extra change to help them get out of a tough spot. A lot of caution should be taken in these situations, however. When you pull out your wallet to give them some money, it's incredibly easy to just reach out and yoink. A word of caution to families bringing kids to Germany. A lot of public parks are clothing optional. Don't be surprised if you're walking through Tiergarten in Berlin and see a sunbather letting the sun shine where the sun doesn't usually shine. Other than the public nudity, Germany is a very family-friendly country. There are laws in place in Germany that prevent kids from being exposed to anything untoward. I would have no problem taking my children to Germany and letting them have a lot of autonomy. Something to consider in Germany is the use of your cell phone. You can pick up a pay-as-you-go kind of phone in Germany, and I know a lot of people who do this. You can also just bring your cell phone from home with you. There are a few considerations that go with that, however. I use Google Fi, which works in over a hundred and some odd countries. I just have to pay a slightly higher amount for the time that I'm in Germany, and I'm good to go. If you're on Verizon or T-Mobile or some other carrier, the easiest way to figure out this process is to just call the company. They likely have a process for this. Just know that you probably can't just leave and go to Germany and use your cell phone from home in that country. Check with your carrier first. How much money should you bring with you? This answer has actually changed recently, and Mark has a pretty good tip about this. 
So a lot of travelers wonder, hey, uh, do I need to take a lot of cash when I go to Germany? No, you do not need to take a lot of cash when you go to Germany. You don't need to take a lot of cash out. I know Germany used to be very much a cash is king society, and in some ways it still is. But in general, the tap pay as you go stuff is all over the place. Since COVID, you know, the credit card machines are all over, so you'll be okay. But I will tell you this, don't expect your Discover and American Express to work at a lot of places. Big international stores like H&M or Zara or going to the big you know, department stores, yes, they'll take your American Express and Discover. But normal shops, your Visa and MasterCard, what are you going to need? Okay, And also, don't forget to let your credit card company and your phone company know that you're going to be traveling so they don't you know, cancel your card while you're gone or you forget to get a data plan when you go travel because wanting to send all those beautiful pictures of Germany, it's gonna cost you money. And if you don't have a data plan on your phone, it's gonna cost even more. So don't forget to sign up for one before you go travel. So yeah, Germany used to be very cash oriented, but COVID kind of pushed them towards cards. This is definitely true in bigger cities, but if you're going to a local cafe in a small village, don't expect to be able to pay with a card there. Any blog that says you can't survive in Germany without having cash is mistaken. You'll be fine as long as you have a couple of coins for the restroom. You'll also need cash for those tips that I mentioned earlier in this video. Back to the question of how much money do I need? Usually I budget for about 30 euros per day. This covers three meals and an ice cream every day. I usually have a bit left over after that, which I then roll into my souvenir fund. If you like to eat at fancier restaurants than I do, 30 euros will probably not be enough. Most meals at the Hofbräuhaus or the Rathaus in München are going to cost you more than 20 euros on their own. If you're a beer drinker, that can get expensive in a hurry. You can always stop by a German bank and use their ATM to get some more cash, but keep in mind that your bank as well as the bank in Germany are going to charge you a fee. Plus, you have to worry about the exchange rate, which may be better or worse depending on the day. I generally come to Germany with the amount of cash that I plan to use on the entire trip, but you have tons of options for this kind of thing nowadays, so you don't have to travel with that much cash. If you're traveling with that much cash, how do you keep it safe? Most hotels have a safe in the room. Put the majority of your money in there. Keep maybe 50 euros on you at any given time so that you can spring for that souvenir if you want to. While traveling between cities, I usually put my money in my luggage that never leaves my side, and I bury it relatively deep into the suitcase to make it just a little bit harder to access. You're going to need coins more often than you likely think. First of all, euros come in paper money starting at 5 euros, but coins are used for 1 and 2 euro denominations. This means that if you're an American and you're paying for things and you're used to coins being relatively useless, you may be in the habit of simply paying with paper money and then putting coins in some jar somewhere. If you do this, you're probably going to end up with a giant bag full of coins, which may or may not actually be able to be exchanged at your bank when you get back to the States. The other thing to keep coins for is the bathroom. While restrooms are free in restaurants and a few other places, by and large you will have to pay to use a public restroom in Germany. This can range from 50 cents to a euro, or even more depending on the place. In train stations and other places, you'll often find that when you purchase something at one of the stores, they will give you a voucher to use the restroom without paying extra. Long story short, keep some coins on you at all times in case you need to use the restroom. One more thing about money in Germany. If you're trying to do something on a Sunday in Germany, just make sure that that thing isn't shopping. Almost everything in Germany comes to a screeching halt on Sundays. Restaurants, museums, and some tourist spots may be open, but every shopping mall, Kaufhaus, and Einkaufszentrum will be closed. I usually use Sundays for travel days for me. If I need to go from one city to another, I do it on a Sunday. Six hours on a train isn't bad if you know that you're not missing out on much. If you are making plans on a Sunday, just make sure to search beforehand to make sure that whatever it is that you want to do is actually still open on Sunday. While in restaurants in Germany, my students are often shocked by several things. First, free refills on drinks are not a thing. If you order a Coke and you drink it before your food arrives, you will have to pay for another one if you want to drink more. You also usually have to pay for water in German restaurants, and it will likely have bubbles in it, as Germans really like their Mineralwasser, which is generally carbonated. If you don't want carbonated water, ask for a stilles Wasser. Again, no free refills. You will have to pay for multiple waters if you need a refill in most instances. I have found a lucky few restaurants in Germany that will bring a pitcher or a large bottle of water for the table, but those are few and far between. One other mild annoyance for Americans is that Germans don't put ice in their drinks. If you order a Coke, you will just get a glass with Coke in it. No ice. 
Another thing that surprises many Americans is the phrase Ist hier noch frei? Ja bitte. Dankeschön. Ist hier noch frei? This is used to ask if the speaker can sit in that open chair at your table. This means if you are a party of two at a table for four, two other people might walk up and ask Ist hier noch frei? If you say yes, then they'll sit at your table and join you. They likely won't interact with you after this initial question, but it is a bit odd the first time that it happens to you. It used to be imperative that you bring a converter with you when you go to Germany, as the electricity in Germany is not the same as the USA. If you didn't have a converter, it would fry your electronic devices. I fried a laptop because I didn't use the right settings on my converter back in 2009 while in Berlin. That said, this isn't really a thing most of the time nowadays. Most modern cell phones, tablets, laptops, and other electronic devices have the built-in ability to switch between the two electricity systems. This isn't always the case, however, so be sure to check with your individual device. I'm sure I've left off a ton of useful information for anyone traveling to Germany, so if you have more tips, leave them in the comments down below. Gute Reise!